flying off the ceiling, taken by this feeling. Baby, we're invincible. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Knotts County. As always, if you're liking the series, drop a like on the video, that'd be delightful. Now, it finally happened. We got the costume, it came through. This hat, by the way, bit big, I think. It 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 looks like a beak. I feel like one of those like 16th century plague doctors in this thing. But nevertheless, um, there is actually more to this. There's trousers and there is even boot covers. There's a belt, but... It doesn't really work very well, so this is what you get, really. But it's the hat, for me, that is the, the main selling point of this costume. You guys wanted Robin Hood for the transfer episodes, and you got him! But today, we're starting on the page of Regan Booty, because some of you guys wanted to see him, have a little look at the way he's improving, and look at these traits. Winds up opponents, gets crowd going. I love it. I'm a huge fan of that. Of course, I've turned off the comparison, so you guys can't see any signings and stuff uh, ahead of time. 23 years old. You notice he is on a new contract, and his wages, I believe, have gone up a little bit. I think he was on 1900 now it's 2300 So I thought... Because his contract expired at the end of this summer, um, or sorry, the next summer. So I thought we'd just get the new contract sorted now, and it would hopefully prevent anyone putting bids in in the summer as well. And it did just that. And he was agreeing to a two-year extension, so he's now on a three-year deal from this point. Be here until he's 26. Uh, it's really, really nice. I think he's an absolutely fantastic player, and hopefully he can do a job for us this season in League One. But we really have tried to strengthen. After that transfer, after the analysis video, I went through and I made a big list of what I wanted. I've managed to get things in most areas, but there's one area that I really do think we still need to try and sign someone. Might end up being a loan signing. Not sure. I do have some money left, though, so we'll have to see that you know the transfer window still got another month i think on it maybe so there's still room and i've got my scouts out looking for some but don't worry we've still signed a lot of young regens as well and i found a way to sort of prioritize the scouting of those guys a little bit more because england had a massive dump of youth intake this year i think it happens every few years that there's a big intake of even the tiniest clubs in the country so there was like four thousand english regens added and it took me forever just to go click get scout report and cover most of them even like my local 11th tier side were getting players coming through so yeah i, I don't know hopefully we'll be able to get some quality out of one of those you know just pure statistically you'd think you would i've also upped the quality uh the thresholds on the skin by one each so he might look a little bit worse initially but that's because again i've i've dumped it up from 13 to 14 or even 15 actually to go blue so that's the reason he also won player of the season uh the fans player of the season with 76 percent of the vote which is insane and of course he was also a uh, league two player of the season so he's now won back-to-back -back players of the seasons in different leagues but slightly more annoying than that is the new club vision. So we're expected to try and avoid relegation this year. Or sorry, expected to avoid relegation this year, which is fine. I think we are capable of doing that if things to be believed are the way things are going. However, they've added in a load more club culture stuff that we've got to try and compete now. And I'm hoping that it's based around the way we've played for the previous two seasons. That is my hope anyway. But this is what we've got. So we now have to play attacking football. I don't know how they're very pleased considering we're only friendlies. We've got to make the most of set pieces and play high tempo attacking pressing football. Now, I think this is based on the way we've played so far. So that's 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 decent for us. They did also want me to play high possession football, but I managed to convince them to say no to that just in case in this league we can't keep as much of the ball. And I didn't really want to be judged on... Because now the problem is we can we now cannot change our style of football, which is really frustrating. Um, because if we had to, we wouldn't be able to because the board would get on my back. So that's a little bit annoying, but I guess at least they're going with stuff it would seem that we actually already do. But the thing that really has bugged me is they now want me to sign players under the age of 20 for the future. And are devastated that I've not done it, even though I have been doing it. Um, because I've signed a couple of guys that are 21 because I was using the old thing that they wanted us to do, where they wanted us to sign players 29 and under. But do not sign players under the age of 30, but they're devastated that we're not... Like, you can't build a team by signing everybody under the age of 19. You've got to sign players that are a bit older sometimes, even though they're like 21. So that is really annoying, particularly as they're not taking into account the fact that I've signed players that are 16 and 17. They just haven't actually joined us yet. I've signed them, but they're not here. So hopefully that will change when those players arrive, but it's devastated? Come on now. Scunthorpe won the playoffs on penalties, so they beat Chesterfield in the final. So Chesterfield nearly came back to back with us. And also got offered the Barnsley job, which was interesting. Gave me a chance to say no. And one final thing, Bolton are back in administration. They're promoted with us, but they are starting with minus 12 again. So I think they'll probably be going down again this year, which is a real shame for Bolton because they've just come back up and now they're going down again. Right, but what you're really interested in is signings. So, uh, well, I mean, I assume you're really interested in this delightful outfit. I mean, uh, you know, try to try to keep your eyes on the screen, guys. Um, but now it's signings. Firstly, I thought I'd show you a couple of guys that I've brought in, but they're not actually here yet. The ones that the board don't seem to give a shit about. This is Ricky Griffiths. He is an attacking midfielder, but the reason I've signed him is because I think we could easily mould this guy to play as, as, as an advanced playmaker. Dribbling solid, first touch solid. Great passing, good vision, good work rate. Uh, sorry, his vision isn't as great as I would like, but he's incredibly fast, uh, like insanely fast, and has great natural fitness, can really nip about there, good determination, flair. I think there's a lot to like about this lad, and for free, I'm not going to say no. So he'll be joining us in January. 
And then we have another Ricky. He's a striker. 13 finishing. His composure is only 8. Would have liked it a bit more than that, but I feel like there's room for him to potentially grow. Again, he's coming on, on a free in that period as well. Heading of 9, technique of 11. For free, I thought he was okay just because of that potential. I feel like at the end of the day, he probably won't be as good as that. But once again, we're just sort of padding it out with some quality players. And the last of these guys is Josh Wright. I was a little unsure of him at first because... He has some areas where I'm a little bit like, I mean, his long shots, for example, are ridiculously bad, but 15 first touch, a decent dribbling on him, cannot tackle to save his life, but he's got excellent determination, acceleration. There's a few things that I like about this guy, and the fact that he was already rated at this kind of level, it, it intrigues me, let's put it that way. So he'll be joining us as well on the 8th of January. So those guys will all be coming in. I think they're all Welsh as well. There's been a lot of quality Welsh players uh, coming through lately, and I've picked up a load of them. But the first actual signing we made is Tunji Akinola, who's coming to sort of be... I said I wanted to try and get a new uh, centre-back to go alongside Charlie Oliver. However, I have got Dara O'Shea back again. He was agree He has agreed to join us for a second season in a row, which is good. Because now we've got Oliver, we've got uh, uh, Dara O'Shea, and we've got Tunji Akinola here. A 22-year-old. Comes in from West Ham. £20,000 was the fee. I probably could have got him for free, honestly, if I'd waited. But I wasn't sure because other clubs were circling. Good heading, good marking, good tackling. Six foot two. Excellent pace and acceleration, though, and that is really intriguing. Great determination. For £20,000, I couldn't really argue with this deal. Nigerian, so we had to be careful about putting clauses in contracts and stuff like that, because and a driven personality. So really, really like this guy. Only on a two-year deal. Couldn't seem to get any more than that, but I'm a fan. I, I think he's going to be a solid option for us in that centre-back lineup, particularly as now we can rotate stuff around a little bit more, and without Ben Turner being there, Pierce Bird and Akinola will do a decent backup job to Oliver and O'Shea, but it gives us a chance to rotate, you know? Then we've got Robbie Burton, who has joined us on a free transfer from Arsenal. He was released in the summer. Three-year deal for him, £1,300 a week. He's relatively solid in a lot of areas. There is another guy I've got on a trial at the moment who I might also bring in. So we've really got some backups in that central midfield role now. Because Matt O'Reilly is back again on loan. I thought about maybe putting a permanent bid in, but when they let us have him for a third consecutive year on loan, I thought, yep, screw it. Why not? So O'Reilly and Booty are back in the middle, but Robbie Burton's joined us too. And I think he's a massive step up over someone like Mitch Rose. So that's fine by me. Three-year deal for that. God, he looks so damn young, doesn't he? For 21 years old, so of course the board hate it. Um, but I think he's solid. There's another guy that might join us as well if we can get the deal done, but it won't be today. Um, so then we'd have four really solid options and youngsters in that midfield uh, that we can kind of rotate around throughout the season. And I'm pleased with that because we've got a bit more money to play with and I was determined to try and use a bit more of it and uh, boy have I as we signed a goalkeeper this is Luke McGee he's coming from uh, Portsmouth for £67,000 uh, so a decent amount of money but I said I wanted a player that was better than a Conquo because I don't think he's going to develop the way that we wanted him to and he's also on a lot of money he's actually on nearly as much money as McGee and I just don't think he's got what it takes so I feel like McGee he's 25 years old but there's a lot more things about this guy that I think he'll be much more solid for us than Arthur Conquo, which is a shame because I do love the lad but some of those weird goals we conceded, part of me suspects that maybe if we just had a better goalkeeper, we would have not had that happen. So hopefully with Luke McGee at the helm this season, we will be able to do that. And I think it was a solid deal. Uh, Portsmouth were keen to get rid and I was keen to bring him in. So 67 grand he comes in for. Um, of course, Niall McPhee cost us a bit more than that in total in the end. Also, Dropkick McPhee. Uh, after that wonderful thing, someone's like, yes, you should call him Dropkick McPhee. So don't worry, his nickname has been uh, changed. Maybe he can start his own uh, Irish Celtic punk band called the Dropkick McPhees. And then we have a striker. This is Tyrese Campbell. £400,000 he's cost us. Big deal. Now, I've only signed him within the last week and a half because we were getting to the start of the season. I was thinking, we have yet to find a striker that was worth looking at. There was a guy that went to Derby in the end that I couldn't have got in the end. Um, but we never actually found out because we didn't put a bid in. But yeah, it, it was Eddie, Eddie Jones or something like that, I think his name was. But you can see that he's on £7,250 a week. We've had to really compromise on the wages to actually get this guy in. But... With the fact that Tweezy was gone and I was really struggling to find strikers, and then when this guy came available, Stoke had him transfer listed for 400 grand. We immediately swept in there to make a deal. He is... There's some clauses in his contract I don't like. For example, he's got a £3.2 million release clause, which is quite low for a player of his quality. But more important than that, he's got a match his highest earner clause. I did originally remove it, but then they snuck it back in by making it non-negotiable and I had everything else in the deal was good and it was the only way we could get the deal done. So I said, you know what? Screw it. I think we're going to make this deal. He's got great dribbling, finishing, first touch, 13 composure. So we'll see if that helps. Passing. There's just a lot of things to like about this guy. He's six foot tall, Obviously, star player for us, really. Uh, for £400,000, though, we actually have a striker. And more importantly, we have a striker that is a permanent signing. So hopefully Tyrese Campbell can do a great job for us up front. But I have signed him a friend, just in case. 
And that is this lad. This is Orna Hegeber. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Norwegians in the chat. Let me know how you pronounce his name. I think it's probably Orna Hegeber. I don't know. But I, I found him immediately after I'd signed Tyrese Campbell because, of course, that's how it works. Um, he's a little bit more on the tall side. But look at that. 17 dribbling, 16 first touch, decent finishing and composure, decisions, determination, flair off the ball. So many things to like about this guy. He's got a bit more, you know, height on the side of things. He's not the fastest, but I still think this guy's got some excellent ability for us. He's on loan from Wolves for the season. We're paying three and a half grand of his wages, but now we have two excellent strikers that we can rotate around this year. And I think that was the right deal for us because even if we just got Campbell, we would have had literally the next best striker we had at the club behind him was either Milan Bars or Ramey Campbell. So we nearly, we really needed some extra quality up there and Orna Hegeber is definitely that. There's also been new contracts for Booty, as you already know. Baldwin, I've given him a one-year extension because I feel like he can do a job for us here. Uh, Hughes has also got a new deal, although he is complete. He was like, he went to abysmal morale at the end of the season because we've been playing him as a DM and I promised him to play as a centre back. But mate, you played like 50 games for us in a League One side, and, sorry, a League Two side, and were one of the best players in the team. Like cry me a river, buddy. Um, so we might end up losing Sam Hughes at some point because he might just complain about not being played, even though he says it's his weaker position. He's bloody fantastic there but ah uh, can't argue with stupid the one area that we do need to strengthen though is left back and brandon fleming will be starting there currently there was a few things i didn't like about him that we found in the analysis video but i wasn't able to find anyone just yet that is any better uh even on a loan signing oh forgot to mention this miguel duhaney is oh, sorry Demico duhaney has also joined us for a third consecutive season on loan but one thing i did want to quickly bring up is the fact that I wish the game was more competitive with you when you try to make free signings who are wanted by other clubs. It feels like if you put a bid in to sign a player who's wanted by other clubs on a free transfer or something, you they never ever go to the other clubs, even if they're in a bigger league. So, at home against Ipswich Town, not going to be an easy one um, by any stretch of the imagination. We're the favourites, which surprises me, but I don't know. Where are we actually expected to come? I'm kind of curious about that now. Season preview. So we're expected to come 15th this year. I, I would totally take that right now. I would absolutely take it. I think it's unlikely we're going to get another back-to-back -back promotion. And I know I've said that before, but I don't know. I'd like to sort of stabilize and bring through some players this season. That's why I've not... I could have maybe got another amazing loan signing potentially, but I thought I'd rather sign players permanently for us this time around. There's a few of them still here, but the only new loan signing is Hegeber. And Man City signed this regen off Sunderland for like £5 million, who was like 14... Uh, not 14, it's like 16 cent Bell. So expect to see him in an England side in about five years. Right. So, obviously, this is not going to be the lineup. We'll uh, do a quick pick and I'll resort around that. So, I don't want to start Hegeber because I've promised Campbell that he's going to be our star man. Hegeber is kind of going to be his understudy this year because he's not got, like, a squad status set. So, we can kind of just use him as and when. Baldwin will probably still start on this right-hand side. But you can see, you know, we really do need to look at this. But, you know, we've got Saunders and Coates, who is finally back at least. So, there's definitely room to improve there. Uh, O'Reilly and Booty, obviously, this way around will be nice. Duhaney, Akinola and O'Shea. Is it Akinola or Charlie Oliver for that? Maybe, it sh maybe we should try Akinola there, and obviously Brandon Fleming, with Luke McGee in goal. Definitely some downsides, but I still think for the most part we've we've done the right thing this year, and I think we've definitely got enough to stay up. Might lose today, though. On the bench, Okonkwo, Oliver, Robbie Burton, Hegeber, Brindley, Bars, and Campbell. I think the bench is stronger too, but there will still be room for the youngsters getting game time this year. This is going to be an incredibly difficult game, I would have thought. I don't expect to see anything like we did uh, against Salford City last time around, let's put it that way. Although we are at home, so you never know. Okay, then. Uh, check the pitch the same size because it seemed to work quite nicely for us last year. I mean, in fairness, most of this team is actually very similar to last year. So new goalkeeper and a new centre-back in here. Midfield is unchanged. The left side and the right side are unchanged. It's just Tyrese Campbell, but it's the bench where I think we've definitely improved. With the likes of Burton, Hegeber, those sort of guys I think are going to give us that little bit extra. I'm not so much scrambling to bring players off the bench who aren't good enough at the moment. I think we've got more options there, which is useful. So here we go. Um... This is going to be a very interesting test today. I'd like to see Tyrese Campbell get off to a good start. I feel like he's got a lot of the things that Tweezy had, but he's got a little bit more composure, and that might be enough for us to score more one-on-ones this year. That's my hope anyway. Booty, and we're going to have to rely on putting some good set pieces. And again, an Akinola heads one over the bar. Judge. Oh, in behind for Ben Morris. Akinola's quick, but he's not that quick. And it's a great save by Luke McGee there. Got in behind, but Akinola's got real pace, and that could help us in these situations. Not that one in specific, though. Ball across. O'Shea clears it. Here's Baldwin. Go on, lad. Get that run on. I don't know who that is. I think that's now McPhee up top. And, oh, oh, he's still got it. Oh, it's all the, they're standing off of him. And he's drilled it wide. Good chance. Games like this is exactly why I didn't want the board judging me on how much possession we had. Because I don't know if we're going to be able to keep as much of it this year as we have in previous. Kenlock, good block. We've actually not had a shot on target yet, which is slightly concerning. Um, I would like to do that. Bolton are winning, though. Baldwin, I'll oh, use the overlap. O'Reilly, there we go. Dehaney. We've got men in the box, hopefully. He's taking his time to allow them to get there, I suppose. Dehaney. 
All the way through, Booty! Oh my goodness me. Regan Booty scores it. He only got two goals in the entirety of last season. His first game for us in League One, and he's gone and scored. Um, Really, really nice patient build-up here from De Haney. He just holds onto the ball for ages, waits for everybody to get in there. Nobody marks Regan Booty at all, just ghosts through, and Sanchez does not do a good job there. And Regan Booty, club hero, scores the lead. That's great. The go-ahead goal, as it were. Worth noting, though, that was our first shot on target. So there's that. O'Reilly given a bit too much space in the midfield. And if Campbell could... Ah, oh, he doesn't make the run. O'Reilly's just going to go alone here, apparently. Can he square it, perhaps? He might. Nope. Instead, he's going to shoot it into the side netting because he is a smart human being. Well, pretty stale first half, in all honesty. We've had one shot on target and it's gone in, like, fair to say. Um, They have committed a lot of fouls for a team that have got so much of the ball, but that's generally how we work, isn't it? Booty to whip a free kick in. Oh, back post and Akinola. Campbell. Good save. Right, he finally had another shot. We've created some chances today, in fairness to us. Uh, now we've got to be careful here. That looks like a bit of a nasty tackle, in fact, from... Oh, it's Sam Hughes. It's fine. I think Nar McPhee's having a bit of a poor game so far. So I could bring someone on for him, but I really wouldn't know who. Dehaney. Got to look through for Campbell. Picks it up. Oh, around the side. O'Reilly's in now. Can he make it 2-0? Great save. Can he keep it in, though? He does, actually. Amazingly. Dehaney. And saved by Sanchez. Okay, second half's going well for us. Dehaney just dropped into the channel for Baldwin. Can he square it? Campbell! And there we go. Notts County 2, Ipswich Town nil. Tyrese Campbell scores on his debut. That's a really nice piece of play. And really nice little... This is just so nice. Just knocked into the channel. Baldwin's completely alone and he actually squares it. Whips it across. Unmarked. Campbell 1-0. Uh, sorry, 2-0. Lovely. That should hopefully seal this game. This is a good performance. I'm actually going to make three subs here just to freshen things up. Bring on um, bars, but also give a little run out for Burton and also Hegeber just to see what they can do. Um... Want to give him some football? Baldwin again. It's nice to see him get an assist today. Dehaney again. I think he's going to be superb for us this year, Baldwin. Oh, back for him. Is there a late run being made? Nope. Yes. Booty. Burton. Oh, we've got a Booty-Burton partnership in the midfield. I'm a huge fan of that. It's been a very stagnant game since that goal. There's been no real chances since then. But again, five chances created on the night is fairly pleasing. I've got to say, I'm all right with that. 2-0 victory. Notts County 2, Ipswich Town 0. Massive win on the opening day. Regan Booty, great to see him score a goal this season. And Tyrese Campbell scoring a goal for us on his debut. That will really, really help his confidence for us and hopefully get him off to the right part. I think he was the biggest outlier this summer and I'm glad we made it at the end of the day. 2-0 up, that's superb. Really, really good start. Bolton, I think they actually got, it turned around on them in the end, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Doncaster turned it around. So Shane Bolton were looking in a really good spot to maybe grab themselves a goal or a win, uh, but it was not to be. But hey, that's a relatively solid start. Beating Ipswich, I don't really know where they're expected to finish, but that's pretty solid. I imagine fairly high up, I would have thought. Fifth, I'll take that. That's a good win. It's really hard to know at this point what games are big and which ones aren't. I might come back and do... Screw it. Let's go back and do Fleetwood Town in the next episode and just see kind of where we're at at that point. I think I might be able to make a couple more signs. We've got a bit of cash still. So I might try and spend that on some younger players instead just to make the board happy, you know? Uh, but there we go. So if you've enjoyed that, and I hope you have, and you're looking forward to the new season, drop a like on the video. That'd be excellent. Robin Hood costume will, of course, be returning for next year's transfer window, uh, which, I mean, obviously, I'd like it to be in the championship, but I don't think it will be somehow. Anyway. Uh, drop a like, that'd be awesome, and I'll see you guys very soon. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. That would be fantastic, and I'll join you guys in the next episode for some Fleetwood Town goodies. Hopefully goodies, I mean, means us winning. We'll see. This could be a, a false dawn for us. Anyway, who knows? I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.